We do not know why we are here. We do not know who built the silo. Walk us through the silo. How many floors is it? How many people are living there? What amenities do they have? What do they not have? 144 floors plus a few subfloors that you might count. Uh, they have enough to survive. They also have not enough to be just a little bit uncomfortable and feeling like something's not right about this. They have food and they have some entertainment and they have mostly each other, but uh, they have a very limited view of the outside world. One thing Graham points out is no one can walk 100 feet in a straight line any direction, which is pretty unnatural. They aim to hold the population right around 10,000. That's the carrying capacity of the silo. And that involves a certain amount of population control. So that's when you start controlling people and you start controlling people in many other ways. And it's kind of a soft tyranny that people have just taken for granted until our story comes along and people start asking questions. Who would you say is in charge at the silo? What we, we set up early on is that everyone is slightly afraid of judicial. Judicial, they're the ones that are going around looking for relics. They are looking for anyone saying things that are don't really fit with how the silo is supposed to function, too questioning, too curious, all of that. And if you say you want to go out, you go out and you die. Um, and that's all controlled by judicial. Deputy Brooks. Mr. Sims, I got this under control. Forget the names. Who is Sims in the scheme of things besides being this darn snazziest dresser? <laughs> I always thought of Sims as like, if he was the head of the CIA, you know, but in this silo. And he's the person that gathers information is trying to make sure people stay safe in the silo, and he truly believes in his cause. He believes in the cause and his duty of what he's doing as far as, you know, making sure people are safe. Some people believe he's mysterious, but, you know, me knowing who Sims is, I, I, I know what drives him, and I know that he's this colorful person, meaning he's not all good, he's not all bad, and he'll do what it takes to make sure the people of the silo are protected. Every department thinks that they're the ones who are most important. So the mechanics are saying, look, without the generator, none of this would work. And the sheriffs are saying, if we didn't keep order, none of this would work. IT says if our computers didn't regulate when the yeah. water came on and then exactly. went air filtration, we'd all die. Which so. is, I think, how our society actually works. Like, we all play a critical role, and we all think our role might be outsized, but there's some truth to it as well. I see you posted an article on our BBS about recovering deleted files. I did. You do know you need to get my approval for any IT-related content before it goes wide. Well, I figured we could cut down on service calls if people could handle some things on their own. Hmm. Mm. I took it down, your post. Bernard is the head of IT, uh, so he holds in his hands the responsibility of the silo functioning properly. He has a responsibility to not only maintain all of those things, but to maintain order in the silo. And if there's a challenge to order, he has to be proactive in making sure that that challenge is suppressed. And there's other levels of control that are revealed as we progress through the season. All revealed, by the way, by a character that Rebecca Ferguson plays named Juliet. But her pursuit isn't one of like exposing the truth or it's not a political agenda. Her journey is to f discover the truth about the death of someone that she loved. What I'm about to show you is more illegal than any relic. I'm sure up top knows about it, but they don't seem to care. Describe the circumstances under which we first meet Juliet. Something has happened and we're now in the search of Juliet for various reasons and we go a long walk down to the generator where she turns out to be the head mechanic and she is asked to maybe leave her position and it puts an entire jeopardy in place when it comes to her being very good at her job and the fact that if someone's not going to run the generator, who is? Um, and then gradually it's the unsolving of basically a murder mystery. How is this not Snowpiercer sat on its butt in a deep hole? What's great is I knew nothing about that show when I wrote the book. People have shown me five other stories from the 50s and 60s that tell a very similar theme. The truths that both are talking about existed independently of them. And that's the beauty of uh, popular culture is that it arrives independently at the same observations. 
there are stories that like, God, what was Kim Stanley Robinson's one about going to another planet? But it's multi-generational spaceships, right? You fill a spaceship with 10, 20,000 people and you send it for 500 years to get to this other star system. Well, that's a long way to go and you don't know if that's gonna be a really habitable system. Why not just stay here on Earth and build your spaceship in the ground and just wait it out until the, the world is a better place? And that's, in a way, what this story is about. It's really one of those big spaceship stories, but it's just a silo underground.